Hello there, this is Rusty Anderson, and you're listening to Things We Said Today with Ken Michaels and Steve Marinucci. Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program, a weekly program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a show that centers on what's going on in the world of the Beatles, news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, best known for my syndicated radio program called Every Little Thing, being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner and many Examiner columns, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hey. I can, and and also I just mentioned it yesterday on Goldmine. Uh, I mean, on uh, Facebook, that I will uh, soon have a an article in Goldmine. Oh, that's so, great! Yay for me! <laughs> You're now going to be a contributing writer for Goldmine magazine. Yep. So, what is the first article on? First article is on the Ringo exhibit. Oh, nice. Yep. So, so you'll all have to pick up a copy of Goldmine now. And for anyone that doesn't know, Goldmine's a magazine that's been around a long time focuses a lot on veteran acts, oldies acts, and has great articles on what's happening today and a lot of, um, you know, period pieces, things about the past. You know, and it's a, one, it's record, a wonderful... And record, sh- record shows, if, you know, if, if people still go to those, and, and actually there's good reason to go to them, too. But, but yeah, they, they, they uh, keep up with the record shows and what's going on in the world of collectibles and... And that kind of stuff. So it's it's really it's really a great magazine. Okay. Well, on today's program, we thought that even though we did a show, probably a few shows back now, on Ringo's exhibit at the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles, we didn't talk at length about the new book on Ringo, which at the moment is just an e-book called Photograph. And actually, Steve happens to have I have the ebook it's available only for anyone with an iPad unfortunately it's not uh, available outside that but if you have an iPad even an iPad 1 it will work in there uh-huh. we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about how the ebook is uh you know uh, is uh, what the, what you get for the ebook and it's I believe it's 14.95 which is not considering this is from Genesis publications hmm. is a bargain um, you know, because most of Genesis stuff is very, very expensive, and this is very popularly priced, and I'm glad it is because it's really something that is very, it's very enjoyable. We'll 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 get into that. Yeah, I don't However, own an iPad, so that's why we have to rely on Steve. One of the advantages between the two of us doing this show is that there are some things, especially if there's an event happening on the West Coast, Steve can cover it. If there's an event on the East Coast, I can cover it. So yep. very often the two of us may not have found out all the information at the same time about a certain thing, but we can attend things just based on our own location. Right. And so um, in this particular case, it's just a product, and I don't own an iPad, but you can talk about it at length, and we will. Yep, we will. We'll, we're going to talk about it today. But first, you were uh, somewhere last night that you want to talk about, Ken. Uh, I was at Fenway Park seeing Paul McCartney. How was it? I loved it. <laughs> well, Actually, this is the second, second time you've... You've seen him this year. Yeah. Well, I saw him at um, the second show he did at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I actually liked this show at Fenway much more. Did you? Uh, for the simple reason, first of all, I could hear Paul a lot better. And that's something that's really important to me. I mean, I, I look at Paul McCartney, though a lot of people don't often say this. I think of him as one of the greatest singers we've ever had in all of music. I think he's got one of the greatest voices ever. So part of the reason why I go is not just to hear all these great songs, but to hear his voice. And when I saw him at uh, Barclays Center, and it could be where I was sitting, you know, I just didn't like the mix all that well. I just kind of felt like Paul was drowned out a lot. I heard him a lot clearer at Fenway Park, and I thought his voice was really strong. Were you, you closer know? or further back uh, last night? Um, I think it was pretty much the same. The, the difference was that um, at Fenway I was... Um, on the left-hand side of the stage, in the low section, kind of like it may be, how would I put 120-degree angle. Mm-hmm. So I could see more of the stage. I was more at a 180-degree angle at Barclays. But um, 
I could see the band better. I saw the screen better. Everything was better about this show, but I love the atmosphere there at Fenway. I love going to that park because right. it's such a historic park, and if anyone has never been to Fenway, it's very much kept like stadiums were in the old days. Mm-hmm. All the signs are old. You know, yeah. you feel like you're going, you're stepping back in time when you yeah, go to I Fenway saw some Park. Yeah, a couple of people sent me pictures uh, of, and posted pictures on Facebook of, of the signs and everything, and having been there myself in my youth, um, but not recently, I remember that, yeah, it's a very very much a place for traditional baseball baseball fans. It's, right. it's a wonderful place. Not only that, the weather was perfect. It was about, oh, cool. It was 70 degrees out. There was a threat of rain throughout the day, but it didn't rain while the concert was on, and there was a nice breeze. I heard it, heard that there were, or somebody had said thunderstorms, and I looked it up on uh, Weather Channel, and I didn't see thunderstorms, but I did see that the skies, it was overcast. And, right. Yeah. But so. uh, no, it was just a perfect night, and... Um, you know, I appreciated the song so much more because I could hear them better. Mm-hmm. And I could hear the musicianship better. I could see uh, the lead guitar parts that Rusty was playing and Brian was playing. And, you know, I just could hear the band so much clearer. And again, the way that you rate a lot of these concerts, it has a lot to do, I think, with just, you know, where you're sitting and, yeah. and, and the sound at that moment. And, um, you know, I think when I was talking about the, the Barclays uh, Center show, in a previous show, the last, I think, maybe two shows back, it might be, Mm -hmm. I might have been a little bit harsh about Paul when it came to his vocals, and a lot of that, like I said, it revolves around where you're sitting and and what you hear at that moment. And he could also have an off night here and there. But, um, you know, his voice is just so strong still Mm -hmm. for for someone his age. And I I love seeing the feedback in the audience on certain songs. And I observed so much more at this show than I ever did at the show at Barclays, I think maybe because of where I was sitting again. But, um, for example, as I've said numerous times here on this show, the highlights for me are the songs that he never does live before, mm-hmm. has never done live before, or hasn't done for a long time. So I noticed when he did Your Mother Should Know, the crowd was respectful. They liked it. They were listening. After that, he did Lady Madonna. Everybody got up. So there's a song that he's done on almost every single tour. You know, mm-hmm. I'm more excited about Your Mother Should Know <laughs> because he's never done that until this tour. Right. Also, being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, I think people were surprised when he did it. They were respectful. They weren't going crazy over it, you know, but some of the same songs, you know, he starts Let It Be, everybody goes crazy. So for someone like myself who, you know, like I said, I'm spoiled. I've seen him every tour since 1976. I know mm-hmm. what he's done. I want him to shake it up a lot. I want different songs in every tour, and he has added new songs, you know, the Beatles songs mainly, and a few wing songs that he hasn't done since 76, and also Another Day, and I love those moments the most, but still, those those core songs get people moving, and there was a, you know, I remember that last show when I told you that there's always people that have never seen Paul live before? Mm-hmm. I had a married couple sit, sit behind my wife and myself, and they were in their 50s or 60s, never saw Paul live, never saw Ringo live. And you would think, how is it possible? You know, you've had all these years, you're a Beatle fan, how can you not have seen Paul McCartney live? Mm-hmm. And they loved this show. They were blown away by it. So when yeah. I see people who haven't seen him before experiencing this for the first time, that's exciting for me, as well as a lot of the young fans that go. You know, and I saw a little, ki- a little kid, a little boy, maybe five years old, wearing a, uh, a shirt with the photo that's on the McCartney 2 album. <laughs> and I was just so impressed with the fact that, you know, his parents are bringing this kid up right. <laughs> and he's wearing one of those shirts. So those kind of things really thrill me. There was also a, a girl in the, in the seats there who, um, when Paul did My Valentine, and they were showing part of the video with Johnny Depp and Natalie Portman on the screen there, but this, this girl was actually doing the sign language to the song. Hmm. which I thought was really cool. That's very nice. And was somebody, she, I mean, was she on stage or was she in the audience? No, she was in the audience. Wow. She wasn't too far away from where I was sitting. <laughs> Closer to the floor, but just the fact that she knew the sign language. Wow. And watching some of the signs in the audience, somebody held up a sign that said 1985, which I thought was really nice. You which know. he, did, which he uh, I believe he did do last night. Yeah, well, he's done it on every show on this tour. In the no, previous. no, he did not. According to the set list I got for the last show, for the Ottawa show, he did not. 
Wow, I'm surprised. Yeah, that was the one that they, well, they bumped that one out because of Mullicantyre and and I noticed that uh, some places had it listed, but according to the set list I got from McCartney's uh, press office, it was it was out for that one show. Hmm. So, um, yeah, because of Mullicantyre and um, Michelle. So. Okay. But anyway. But still, great show. And, great and like show. I said, if you've never seen him before, or even if you had many times, never waste an opportunity to see him. Yep. Yep. I mean, okay. Now. <laughs> we'll talk about the book. Now that we've gotten halfway through the show. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, all right. We'll, 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 let's talk about the book. And like I said, if you have an iPad and you are wondering about this, it really is a good buy. For one, like I said, I guess one reason to get it is because it's it's so darn cheap. Genesis publication things are usually big bucks things that a lot of people can't afford. This one is very affordable. And there and, will be the limited edition version coming out at the end of the year that's expensive. Right. And that's that that there's some there's some thing and I have not uh checked into that. In fact I wish Ringo had addressed that when he was uh, in Los Angeles, but he did not as to what the printed book will have as opposed to the e-book and the, and the exhibits. He's already said that there's going to be more pictures. Hmm. But the big attraction with the e-book that really makes it a must is Ringo. There are video introductions to every chapter. And there's also numerous audio clips all the way through the book where Ringo comments uh, about the pictures, about what's in the book. What, what's there and you know with his memories and i know you know uh, and i was thinking that you know he's he's always said he's not going to write a book this is basically it this is him you know this is his memories he's he's not it's not filtered through a, a ghost writer it's his you know memory straight on right and you know and this is you know if you're ever wondering i mean it's his story it's not you know it's not it's very very positive it's not a um you know he doesn't demean anybody in the book he doesn't go after anybody it's all very you know up and up you know and light and i guess that's you know that's probably uh, probably some people are going to wish there were more dirt well of course ringo's not going to do that mm -hmm. but th this has you know the world through ringo's view and and it's great it really is the pictures there's some great pictures in here that childhood pictures that he rescued from boxes that his mother saved that he he got hold of after she passed away that he said he t said in Los Angeles that he had, was not even aware that his mother had saved all the stuff that she did right and and then he saved a lot more stuff or his he, his his um, assistants had saved a lot more stuff than he realized and so when they went to go through their archives for the Grammy Museum exhibit and for this, they found, and for the book, they found a whole bunch of stuff that they didn't even know they had. And that's, and a lot of the pictures are in the book. And there are things in, in the e-book here that are not, that I don't recall from the Grammy Museum, which is really kind of cool. And the audio clips are not, and the video clips are not there. Right. So there's one, there's one thing that is really, really nice about it and in typical ebook fashion you can click on the pictures and and bring them forward um in some cases he has with with like some of the slips of paper uh um you can tap on them and show and they'll show both sides um nice yeah no there's a lot of really i mean it's really really nice nice touches in here in fact the little symbols the to for the audio clips vary throughout the book and it actually i normally don't read instructions and i started getting into the book and started looking and then i realized hey wait a minute there's there's a lot more audio clips here than i realized before and there certainly are hmm. there's a there's quite a few almost just about every page has an audio clip not everyone but um, at least half maybe two-thirds so that's really that's really one of the nice things about the about the book let me ask you a few things. Yes. Uh, first of all, as far as Ringo and his photography is concerned, do you ever get a feel for any kind of artistic bent 
or flair that Ringo has as a photographer, or are these photographs more pretty much in the moment, what happens? I like you were saying, there's a moment there where the Beatles are in a car and fans are following them, so obviously you take a snapshot of that. I mean, mm-hmm. you just you do it as it happens. But are there a lot of moments where you get the feeling that Ringo has put his own touch, his own eye, his own feel into the photography, or are they really just, you know, like I said, in the moment kind of shots? It's a little bit of both. And he goes into that into the uh, in the introduction um, that he uh, added on to the book. Um, he says, you know, I've got a lot of pictures in the e-book, a lot more to come in the real book, and some in the exhibition in the Grammy Museum. He says there are shots of the boys that only I could have taken, which is an interesting perspective, you know. Um, but he says in the e-book there are also photos of uh, Dezo Hoffman and Bob Freeman, photographers who took a lot of pictures of the Beatles, but I took a lot of photos of them, too. We always had a real photographer, but I just love taking pictures, and I still do. He talks about using the the, the uh, lenses to do the shot for Blue Jay Way of George, you know, right. and all those little lenses, and he, you know, and he talks about that. He said, he says, photography has always been an interest of his, and he said, they all had cameras. And he said, it would you know, somebody could have put together a book of, of all of their fo- photographs. That would he, be really nice. I he mean, said, he said we could have called the, we could could have a book called he he mentions this. He said, we could have a book called the Beetle Photos, just an idea. Of course, you know, I, who knows where that's going to go? Maybe it'll co- it'll go somewhere. But um, I mean, that's interesting. But uh, some of the photos are of the moment. Some of the photos are very are artistic, like the one of him taking the shot of the of the um, the fans in the car, the shots of the of the group doing various things. Um, so yeah, there's there's a little of both there. That's um, really interesting because I've known for years that Ringo had a strong interest in photography. I didn't know about the other Beatles. Mm-hmm. So it would be interesting to see any photos that the other three have done. Well, George, George had some photos in the, in the book for the HBO thing, uh, for the okay. HBO movie. So there were some in there. I'm, I can't recall offhand whether Paul's had any in any of his books. I, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was, you know, there was one or two. But. I'm talking about over a long period of time, not a few select photos. Right. Was it something that they kept up with through the years? Mm-hmm. Ringo certainly did. Yeah. Because there, you know, the photos are are all the way through, you know, all the way through the Beatles, um, and there's some there's some really interesting photos. The, uh, of course, it starts out with his childhood photos, and there and his young photos before being with the Beatles, and there's some great shot uh, and some interesting shots that you look at them versus how he was as a Beatle, and you go, that's Ringo. I mean, they're really, they're really unusual. You almost don't recognize him in some of the shots. It's very, very funny, actually. Huh. But wow. uh, are there specific shots that you can talk about that you really found fascinating? Yeah. Um, that that Ringo took. That Ringo took. Um, and also, before you answer that, are the majority of these photos Beatle photos? No, no. There's the first two chapters are before the Beatles. He gets into the Beatles with um, the third chapter, which is called Beatle Buddies. And there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's some mood photos. Uh, there's a, a great timer photo of of uh, him and Paul kind of hugging each other. And he says, uh, it's on a time. he makes a comment, an audio comment. He says, it's on a timer shot, so that's why we're looking weird. They have this kind of weird, this kind of surprised look at the camera. Um, hmm. but he, but he caught a lot of them. A lot of the pictures are them caught off guard because he, you know, cause he could. Right. So there's, uh, there's a lot of that. There's also a lot of personal memories. I mean, there are shots, there are not, there's a, a shot of Brian Epstein. He talks about, uh, um, how Brian was as a person and, you know, how Brian called him for, you know, for the Beatles and, and, uh, would call him to fill in several times and so there's that like i said uh, a lot of the shots are uh, are not art shots some some of them are some of them aren't 
a lot of them, you just get the feeling that he loved to just go snap in pictures, which I, I mean, who doesn't, you know, with a camera in their hand, like to, especially now with the digital, you know, digital format, whereas back then they didn't have that. Mm -hmm. You were, you know, you had to kind of watch with the film, you know, you only had a limited number of pictures on a roll, so you had to be a little more discriminating on what you took, whereas now that's not really the case, at least not for me. Uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's you know you can see that, and there, there's there's some nice shots. A lot there are shots that aren't not all the shots in here are taken by him. There are publicity shots uh, of the four of them that um, that you know that I that he's gotten the rights to. Use. There are some remarkable shots. There's the one shot of him with the beetle haircut, and I guess it's I guess it's the '64 holding the camera. With a self, it's a self-portrait taking taking it into a mirror, um, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. Um, there's, uh, I mean, there's just a, an overwhelming number of great shots. There's a shot of Murray the K. He, he, any comments on Murray the K? And and uh, I know a lot of there's been comments about uh, you know how Murray the K was kind of took advantage of them, but he actually has nice things to say. He says he said uh, uh, we have to thank him. He was a great guy. He actually says here, says Murray the K broke the Beatles in America, which I think you could probably dispute uh, among you know people with that. But but he does he does say he was a great guy, so that's nice. He's got a picture of George wearing uh, one of Murray the K's T-shirts, the submarine. And for anybody that's old enough to remember Murray the K, the submarine race watchers, uh, you probably remember that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think I've seen the. Um, is it George? That were, or maybe John that wore a WMCA good guy shirt. Right. Yeah, I think or they I think, could have both done it too. Right. So I don't know. The, there is a shot of George wearing the submarine race watcher shirt in here yeah. that he that he apparently took. There's a shot that uh, of of Ring, that Ringo took of Paul uh, sitting at a piano um, with George behind him. There's uh, there's a a moody shot of uh, John with an acoustic guitar. Um, there's just there's a lot of and there's. Shots taken, you know, taken out of car window, you know, just of traffic. Um, but there, I mean, there's a lot of interesting shots, a lot of miscellaneous shots. There's a, a shot of uh, a theater, Bill, uh, theater marquee, it's called the Art Theater, and it says, Christine Keeler goes nudist plus playgirls. <laughs> so, I don't know what ring, what side of town they were in but <laughs> they were uh they were they were enjoying that they have a picture of phil specter uh, young phil specter huh so george martin and and uh, brian epstein in beetle wigs there's all sorts of interesting shots how about something with rory storm most of the shots of rory storm are not shots that he took at least i can't i don't remember any shots that he took the shots of rory storm are him and the band taken by somebody else. So, what did he have to say, if anything, about Rory? He he was very ni very nice about Rory. He uh, his like I said, I mean, he did, really doesn't criticize anybody to any great extent here. So anything he says is very positive, and he, you know, he's very positive about Rory Storm. So, are there any shots from after the Beatles, say, from recording sessions? With the other Beatles or yes, there are, with there other are musicians, there are recording session, session shots. There are not. There are not a lot of solo recording session shots. Um, I would love to see something from the Ringo sessions. Yeah, you know, I, lots of photos I was, there. Yeah. I was kind of hoping for that too, but there are there are not. Um, there's not a lot of that. There's uh, uh, you know various shots of the other Beatles eating in the bathroom. Horsing around, there's a shot of a uh, shot that's in the uh, Grammy exhibit of uh, Paul and Mal Evans uh, horsing around. Uh, Paul it looks like Paul's kind of riding. They're it's hard. To, it, well, actually, uh, Mal's kind of bent over, and Paul's kind of standing next to him. It all, it, so that's kind of funny. Um, Does Ringo give details as to when certain shots were taken? I mean, you can look at them when, and know when, and when he remembers. There's not. He does not do a lot of that detail because he doesn't seem to have a lot of um, a lot of uh, he didn't seem to write or a lot of that information 
apparently was not on the picture. So, but he basically goes through memory on mm-hmm. on, on these things and just kind of con- sits there and comments off the top of his head. Right. But still, it's it's fun to hear some of the stuff that he says about you know about um, the Beatle days, Beatlemania. You know, uh, later on, you know, there are, there's uh, a shot. Uh, there's a couple of shots of him. In, I'm looking at the, it's actually it's a shot of him and Harry. He's kind of dressed like a wizard. Um, is, uh, that might be Son of Dracula, actually. Sounds not like sure, it. Not sure which one that is, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a very cool shot of him and Harry. Did he uh, have anything to say about Harry? Because I know that Ringo often has referred to him as the best friend he ever had. Yeah, he. I believe he doesn't go into a lot of detail about Harry, uh, as I recall. Here's a crea- I'm looking at a creative shot that he did similar to the one of George with Blue Jay Way. He did John, and it looks like it's a Lady Madonna session because it, he has the uh, round glasses on at the microphone. Hmm. So that's a, that's a that's a cool shot. And then he has there's another shot here uh, of Paul and John singing together. What period? Um, it looks like the Lady Madonna sessions. Okay. So. Well, we know what that video looks like. Right. You know. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it's from that video. Hmm. Um, but there's all really, all, really when they recorded Hey Bulldog. Right. Hmm. Okay. Um, and he said he he also had a chapter called the '60s and substances come into play. <laughs> he does not talk a lot about that, and for with good reason. Uh, oh, here's the shot of uh, it's the son of Dracula. Okay. Uh, and he says he he there's no audio clip here, but he says there's my best friend Harry Nilsson and I in Son of Dracula, the movie I put together. He was Dracula, and we became great friends after that. In the end, he was my best friend. God rest his soul. I love the man. Okay. So, and then there's a in the very next frame there's a picture of Mark Bolan. Mm-hmm. So see, so, yeah, uh, that's what I would look forward to is shots of him with. Not just the Beatles, but other musicians too. Well, it, the Bolin shot is just Bolin. It's not. It does not. He's not. He. It's a shot he took. Right. So he's not in the frame. He is in the frame with Harry. With Harry Nilsson. Harry Nilsson is out of costume, dressed in a suit, and looks very natty. And Ringo's <laughs> in this kind of wizard costume that looks very interesting. So. So how long is this book in terms of pages? It's not short. That's what's really nice about there is there is an awful lot in here, and uh, this was great. this was uh, Genesis this this was their very first ebook, so you know hopefully this will be the first of many, and if they do some more Beatle books, this will be this will be fun. But uh, yeah, this is the first one that they've did, they've done, and it's a great it's a great version. If there's one story. Or anecdote that Ringo mentions here, apart from what you are, have already said, mm-hmm. that really stands out about his life, whether it's with the Beatles or anything else, what would it be? Well, the, the, the comments about Beatlemania are, are the most interesting because, uh, you know, obviously that was a an incredible, you know, an incredible moment in their in their lives. It was obvious that they were all caught by by surprise. It it uh, I mean it you know they I mean they knew they knew they were good. They knew they were going to they were going to make it, but I don't think they, I don't think they they realized what was what they was going to happen, that they were going to make it as big as they were, and that that's kind of the what you get a feeling of. Yeah, well, no one could have predicted that. Right. As talented as they were, that right. kind of magnitude, that kind of impact, mm-hmm. you know, like nothing that had ever happened before. Right. So. You definitely recommend this to all of our. I, d- I definitely recommend it, and he, like I said, like you, you were saying earlier, the the book that's coming in at the end of the year. They haven't announced the specific date yet. According to the description here, it's it's going to have a wealth of new memorabilia, photographs, and text. It says taking you deeper into Ringo's early life, his Beatle days, and beyond. Hear about Ringo's adventures, mishap, and movies. With appearance from an all-star ca- appearances from an all-star cast of friends, which answers my question earlier about whether there will be multimedia involved, and it looks like, according to that, there will be. 
Hmm. So and and each of the twenty five hundred because there's only going to be twenty five hundred books, and they're going to be hand signed. Right now, I I'm hoping, and I don't know that this is going to happen, but I'm hoping that there is a popular press version for those that can't afford, you know, to to spend the big bucks. There should always be. There should be and just like with I Me Mine when it came out mass market. Mm-hmm. Same thing, really. I'm well. I'm, he did. Yeah, they did do that with that. And um, but I mean, some of the other the uh, first uh, book with Derek Taylor uh, would never came out popularly pressed, and some of the others haven't. Some of the photograph books haven't come out, although they weren't done specifically by the Beatles. But it would be really nice if, I, and I hope that they they do that. All right. So. Steve feels you should definitely pick up a copy of this ebook, and, if and you, you would, can get it. You can get it through iTunes, by the way, uh, and the iBook Store. Okay. Now, if any of you would like to get in touch with us, an easy way to do so is by email. Our email address is things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. You can get in touch with me through my own personal email, which is every little thing at att dot net. Be sure to check out my website, which is kenmichaelsradio dot com, which, by the way, has my complete interview with Mark Lewison on there. And um, you can also contact us through Facebook. We have our own Facebook page at Things We Said Today. And don't miss, don't miss my Beetle Examiner columns. Uh, and we've been really doing a um, crazy job on covering Paul's tour. Um, following, uh, It's been intense, let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> it's been very intense. It's been so, an amazing tour so far. And yes, I hope, it has. I hope you get a chance to see him. I yeah and uh the the word is by the way that uh it's going to keep going um or the rumors I should say the rumors are that it's going to keep going. Well that wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me either. So Just the question is will there be more dates in the US? That's the question. That's the question. Okay. So, for things we said today, I'm Ken Michaels thanking all of you for listening and we'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.